All right. Yes. All right. Are we in business, Kyle? I just switched to the first slide. And Carrie, um, while that's about to pop up, the first image I have on display right now would be five points, Jacksonville. Um, and so this talk, I want it to be about this idea of Jacksonville, how Jacksonville is growing, how the cultural sector of Jacksonville is steady growing. And um, I'd like to have a talk with you guys back and forth about some of the places you feel like you go to in this city um, as far as arts and culture are concerned. Does the point slide is up. There it is. Yes. And you know, now that that is up, so we've got five points. And also what I'm going to do is jump to another slide, but there we have five points. We have a lot of really cool shops that are small businesses. Yeah. Dustin, the five, five, looks like the five point arts market is up. Looks like it's, looks like it's got a pretty responsive right now. Okay, here we go. And we have Riverside arts market. I don't know how many of you all on the call have taken a trip to the Riverside Arts Market. I think it's been going on for quite a while now. Um, a lot of very interesting and exciting things are happening. I'm gonna switch to the next slide and let me know how long it takes before that one pops up. So Jacksonville has been growing. It's been growing steadily. Um, a lot of changes have been happening. I got here in 2005 and I would say um, by now, I've seen a lot of significant changes. Carrie, you let me know when that next slide pops up after Riverside Arts Market. Dustin, it, it is up. It, it, it's up almost like a second after you, you click it. All right, perfect. Just just to throw my timing off some more. Okay, so we are <laughs> so we're back on time. All right. So let's take a look here. So this was shared recently from um, someone from Berkshire Hathaway. I think that's the name of the real estate company. Take a look at this. So since and amid the pandemic and since the pandemic, take a look at this list of top 10 places that people have been moving to. Isn't it crazy here? So it's been a year, yes? So we have Salt Lake City, Utah at number one. And look who's number two. It would be us, yeah? I have always considered Jacksonville to be, have the potential to be the Seattle of the Southeast. We have uh, a lot of rivers, right? We have, we have oceanfront, we have a growing art community, and we have a lot of breweries. We have a lot of small businesses opening up. It's a pretty exciting time to be here. Can you all see? This my switch and slide. We have my favorite museum here in Jacksonville, which would be the Cummer Museum of Art and Gardens. Um, we also have the Jacksonville Museum of Contemporary Art downtown. So we have two major museums, and then we also have Mosh Museum of Science and History. So we have three places. Um, I'm curious to know from everyone who was signed in. Just going ahead, and if you could type to uh, Carrie, do you have a favorite of these three museums? I'm just curious. And if you could tell me very quickly um, why the Comer or Jamoka. Just, or um, yes. So Robin Price had just made a con uh, comment just that Jacksonville is turning into Seattle with gaps between parts of the city, some parts of the city being well taken care of and other parts not being well taken care of. I, I think referring more to the disparity between the haves and the have, have, have nots and just inequity. Um, Damien Del Carpa, Damien, it's coming in so fast. The Comer for sure. I love the environment. And I have more chances to make memories there. Abdullah says, I've been to the museum uh, that the picture is up. It's beautiful inside and out. Um, Tyler, the Comer, the gardens, plus the kids exhibit area. Uh, Laura Patois just went to the MOCA a couple weeks ago on a whim. The exhibits are always changing. I love the atrium when you first walk in. Uh, Shakura, um, I love the garden at the Comer. Yes, okay, fantastic. This is great. So a lot of you all are engaged and involved here, I see, and have visited at least one of these spaces. 
I do agree also when we're talking about the idea of Jacksonville and the communities, it is interesting how an emphasis is more placed on, I would say the beaches, more emphasis is placed, placed on the Riverside, Avondale, Ortega. Yes, we might talk about what's happening on the South side. We may be talking about a little bit of what's happening um, kind of toward the Mandarin area. But who would you say are the communities that are definitely being overlooked? And I would love for some people to very quickly just type in spaces that they feel like are not being represented. Especially with all these people here moving to the city now. Justin, you have a couple of folks saying the north side and then the east side, northeast, uh, north, north side, um, east side. Absolutely, 100%. And how did I know it's exactly, I, that's what I was expecting to hear. <laughs> All right. uh, downtown, I feel like it's misrepresented. A. Philip Randolph, Arlington area. Downtown has a huge homeless problem. These are all different com uh, comments that are coming in. Um, yes. Just in addition, not trying to jump back to what we were talking about a second ago, Tyler uh, also shared that he's excited about the renovations at Mosh, and Shakura uh, stated that she loves the interaction uh, of Mosh. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So this is great. So we've got some good things, we've got some bad things, we've got some things that we still definitely need to be working on. We see obviously that there's certain communities that are not being as engaged as they should be. I won't get specifically into, we know who those communities might be, <laughs> all right? Now, when it comes to the arts especially, it makes me wonder, those places that we're talking about being underserved, do we know about interesting art things, happenings, creative happenings that are happening in those spaces is a big question that I have. And if so, what would they be is that question I would have for you. If we, especially if we moved away from that Riverside arts community that, you know, the, the, some of the images I was showing earlier, or some of those things happening in the beaches, what is happening on the north side as far as the arts are concerned, or more on the northeast side? And Carrie, if you have any people who type in, I would love to hear from yeah. you. Yeah, sure said music and art happening um, there at the north side. I typed in the North Campus Art Gallery over at our. Uh, Robin Price said a little music events and art mark, uh, markets pop up more. Uh, mark Harris says yes. Um, um, market that comes up secure poetry. Um, the art walk downtown. Tyler, I think that love uh, large public murals would be great in some way on the north side. And there's the melon market, which Mark and also um, uh, Robin uh, just just stayed, you know just shared. Where's and that last sure place? Like Where's it located? Uh, the Mellon Market. I, and, and folks, and, and Rob, um, Robin or Mark, if you wanted to unmute yourself, but I, I've seen uh, one of our professors also just on social media visiting as well. Um, Carrie, so th they have the Mellon Market once a month, is usually on a fellow Randolph. Um, I was like, Thank the you. way you have to Thank find you, out Mark. about it. I didn't even know like, about it. That sounds cool. I'm going to include like the Instagram link so y'all can kind of like notice it in the chat. And, and, I've, I've seen some like, and also on what's happening at the melanin market. What are you, what are you noticing? What's going on there? What kind of stuff is on display? So, um, there's different vendors from. Like clothing from food trucks to different musicians that are local talent. There's, there's, there's a lot of local talent or even local businesses coming together for exposure for the Jacksonville community. How long has it been going on now, would you say? Because I have heard of it. How long has it been happening? I would say, well, to my knowledge, maybe like three years. It's been going on for the past three years. That's what I, yeah, I to see. my knowledge. I see, and is it well attended or how, how is it doing? Um, I, I think it was well attended when I went. Um, I haven't been to like the most recent ones, but I do think that that there's a there's a good crowd. Of course, there could be more. Um, but I think it's it's a well attended event. Like I've, there's people 
from other city, like other vendors, from, like from other states in the city that came down to the event to be a vendor. And like I said, I it's, it's been pretty good. Okay. No, so thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Jacksonville is a huge city, isn't it? I sometimes wonder if like a New York city, it should be cut up into boroughs. So, <laughs> so we can wrap our minds around, you know, especially when we're talking about the distance of everything. It feels like there are these different ecosystems going on. Yes. And uh, they're pretty far apart. And sometimes it can be a real challenge to get from one side to the other. And usually, do you find yourselves attending more events that are happening more in your immediate surroundings or in the places that you are going, that you work, or are you mostly going to think things around where it is that you live? As I am going on with the uh, presentation, I'd like for you guys just to type in a few of those things to carry and have him share a few. All right. Um, I'm going to move off of this picture here from the comer. Right now, incidentally, um, let's see here. So I am going to attempt right here to move forward with my slide. Oh, there it is. We have the beautiful Cummer Gardens there. These two actually, um, the young lady on the right hand side would be Lili Yuen, who is a former student of mine. And on the left hand side would be Crystal Floyd, a local uh, artist in Jacksonville who works out of Cork Studios. I'm not sure if you all have heard of that. But right now, I am actually showing with these two at the comer. So at least for the next week or so, you'll still be able to see some work from us up there at the museum. And Dustin, looks like, our, looks like our, our friend the delay has returned. So now, now it's up. Now, now it is up. Which was up? Oh, the, the, uh, the picture of um, your, your colleagues um, at the comer. That just popped now, now looks like we're looking at um, uh, Weldon Hemings Weldon Johnson Park. Yes. Yes. Is there Yay, it? technology. I want to just let you guys know that it actually hurts me. I would love to be standing in a room with you guys right now, actually looking into your faces <laughs> and having a nice, long, interactive conversation with you. I right now I'm actually teaching all of my classes 100% in person and I've been doing it since last semester but that's been happening only because I am actually very below mediocre to below mediocre online and I think I'm actually kind of decent in person so I apologize for all these delays here <laughs> and for the awkwardness of this presentation please forgive me folks um we have an image here now of the James Weldon Johnson Park which has been renamed recently, yes, downtown. I'm gonna switch to another slide, which would actually be um, some events that have been going on that are, we have a young lady named Yaya Cordona. Uh, I apologize, Yaya, if I mispronounced your last name, but um, she just started doing some really cool events and um, there's going to be some more programming going on downtown. Recently, well, it was March 13th, they actually had a competition here where there was some chalk drawing that was going on and they had some judging happening. I'm switching to the next slide. Christopher Clark, I don't know how long before it'll switch, but Christopher Clark would have been the winner of that competition. Christopher Clark is also one of the young and up and coming artists here in Jacksonville. Carrie, let me know when you can see Christopher there um, doing some chalk drawing. It looks like, up. yep, it, it, we, we can see it now. There he is, there he is. Okay, there's Chris. So I'm gonna go on ahead, Chris is there, but I'm gonna go on ahead and move to another slide while Chris is there. And Carrie, you let me know when you see a very interesting image popped up that's very much different from the image with Chris. Looks like a golf course is starting to appear. There is a golf course. <laughs> All right. There is the TPC. And that is happening there in Ponte Vedra. Now, that's a big event that happens in Ponte Vedra. The question I have for you guys is, we've been talking a lot about a lot of arts and culture stuff. But the reality of the situation is, I would say, probably the biggest and most impactful um, and most prestigious things that are happening in the city might be revolving around mostly, would you say some of our sports? Now, could anyone push back at that? Because when I think of Jacksonville, 
and how Jacksonville is seen nationally, I would probably say that things like the TPC or the Jacksonville Jaguars are probably the most visible. How do you guys feel about that? Do we agree or do we have some pushback? And if so, what would be the other things that I would that you would say would be more visible than these two? I agree. I think uh, our baseball team is kind of visible too. Well, they used to be the Suns, and now they're the Shrimp, which is terrible because we had a nice song. <laughs> 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 the it went from shrimp. the Jacksonville Suns, which makes sense in Florida, to the jumbo shrimp. Like, okay, <laughs> I probably well, wouldn't eat like them at a baseball shrimp. game. <laughs> I like them, but I wouldn't eat them at a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Is there anything else, guys, beside these three? So, would you say that the sports are leading right now? So, Dustin, the majority of the folks that put in the chat um, did agree or said I'm new to relatively new to Jacksonville, but agree that sports are huge. You don't have any any other, any anyone else that disagrees with, with that statement? That disagrees with that statement, okay, okay. I am glad that we have the Riverside Arts Market. I'm glad that we have our few museums. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we have a few of these other markets like the Melanin Market and others. But I think the reality of the situation is there's a lot more work to be done as far as the arts and culture are concerned in the city. And for all of the people who have signed on and are participating in this talk today, um, the question would be here, um, of all of these things, which of these things are you honestly the most excited about? And I know you're gonna tell me what it is that I want to hear, but I don't wanna, I don't want you to tell me what it is I want to hear. I want you to really more share the truth of what you think moves the needle in this city. And the reason why I also have, so while you guys might be typing in or whatever with Carrie, the reason why I have this picture up so long of the TPC is that Jacksonville has a lot of money in it, just as other cities do. We have cities like New York City, we have cities like Los Angeles, we have cities like Chicago who have enormous creative art communities and culture. When you look at this TPC sawgrass picture, there are a lot of millionaires living on those, living up against the beach. There are a lot of millionaires living up on the river. But the question is, where is all of that money going? Where is it going, folks? And that is the question I have for you. And this is part of the Jacksonville big art problem here. If, would anyone like to unmute themselves and let me know where you think a lot of the money is going? When I say, yeah, like how do people spend that extra money beyond, I'm talking about the basic bills and everything else? I think the communities that have all of these people with all of these money, it stays in those communities because I live in the Norwood Lim Turner area and to be nice, it could look a lot better. I would have okay. to. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, I Who used to that? live down Robin? in oh, Robin Price. Hi, Robin. Hi, I used to live in Arlington and it was before the Regency closed down and I saw the downturn of it because mm -hmm. the money started leaving the area but there are people still living there i was like the regency is so nice i used to love walking through there and going yeah. shopping with my friends now it's just like this big empty mall it's like where'd all the money go and it goes back to the beaches or stays with all the rich people kind of sucks so in arlington though so i have a question robin because there are a lot of people living in arlington where is that money going for the people who are actually in that physical space. Where do you think it's going? I feel like it's going in those like three month shops that stay there in like in the Arlington area. There'll be a new shop every three months and then they'll leave. Or those people who live in Arlington are willing to drive down 30 minutes to the beaches and ah. spend their money there nice. I, I see. And when they hit, and, 
and Robin, when they hit the beach, what, what do you think they're spending their money on? Usually food, because that's, yes. that's what I, like, there's a bunch of restaurants everywhere in Jacksonville. Okay, that's a great one there, Robin. So, and I think food, yes. And Shakura, I hear what you were saying. Yes. Is there anyone else here who wants to unmute themselves? Thank you, too, for joining in there and letting me know where is this money going for what's on the screen? And where do you think the money is going in your community? That extra money that is being spent, that disposable income. So this is Mark. I think that a lot of a lot of money is being spent on to like more apartments and in, in comparison to actual um like renovations for communities that need it. You're talking about new apartments, new like brand new structures that are going up everywhere, you mean? Yes, like, like okay. yeah, that's what like some beach in downtown. I see, I see. And Since what community are you in, Mark? What community are you in right now? Where what community do you live in? What side of town? I I live on the west side. I just recently moved. Um I'm near Chafee Road, but I used to live be near Edgewood. And okay, okay. On Edgewood. And and I have a question for you in that community, a lot of disposable income. Where is it going? Or would you say food is the main source? Of the disposable income. I really don't know, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. And you know what, Mark? That's a great, that's a great answer. I think a lot of people don't do not know. All right. Um, but okay. Thank you for being honest there. Is there anyone else who wants to chime in that I haven't heard from yet before we move on a little bit? Because this is a great question I have for you. And I I want to hear if there's anyone who has a different answer. Hey, this Justin, is Laura. Can you hear me? Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. Okay. No, I was just going to say quickly, um, I'm Lacey. I, similar to what Mark was saying, um, in San Marco, I live in San Marco and the money is funneled or seems to be funneling to new apartment complexes. So we're building new com community spaces, in my opinion, to keep people in our community or to bring people to San Marco, if that makes sense. So and I, Lacey, I find it interesting. And Lacey, with all that San Marco wealth, San Marco is a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. What do you think they're spending a lot of their disposable income on? Honestly, I, I am seeing an increase in spending on what we would say perhaps are cultural events happening in our community. So we are okay. sponsoring things. We're paying for things that are bringing people to San Marco, right? We're not going, I, I don't see funds being funneled to other places or uh, corporations. It's more, I, and again, it's more, I feel like bringing individuals to San Marco to then spend money right on the food and the shops that are here in our town square, the right? And, and education, yeah. schools, yeah. Okay, no, thank you, Lacey. Yes, and Laura? Yeah, when I saw the picture, I thought of how um, what seems to happen sometimes what I've read is that when there are events in Jacksonville that attract wealthy people, they often stay on Amelia Island at one of our two like four star resorts. We have an Omni and we have a Ritz. And so they're actually coming up to Fernandina and spending their hotel money, their, you know, recreational money in Nassau County, which is not ideal for Duval County, who's ho hosting the events. Um, I've definitely, I know that when the RNC was supposed to come, um, I believe it was over the summer, the Ritz was booked on Amelia Island and we were gearing up for this influx of people, even though the RNC actual event was being held in Jacksonville. Beyond that, to your question about where are people spending their money, um, I think they're spending it on personal items, especially with COVID. So cars and big screen TVs and a lot like a lot of people are putting in pools right now. Um, you cannot buy a kayak. Uh, they're like out of stock because people um, are investing in items that they can do things at their homes. And then I think as soon as people are able to travel more freely, you're going to see a lot of travel, personal travel. But I don't think that you're going to necessarily see like people traveling to Jacksonville um, for vacation. But who knows? But I don't think for an India, people are necessarily going to Jacksonville. Um, you gave me some solid ones there because other than food 
I think we had a lot of food and kind of like shops, kind of like small shops. Then we have, you had cars, TVs, pools, kayaks. Here we go. Here comes the money. But even these things, we're talking about kayaks. Those are certain communities also, right? More riverside communities and the pools. Okay, these are the things that I'm looking for here. I see trampolines every, anywhere. <laughs> uh huh. Is there anyone else here before I move on? Because this was some good stuff. Yes. Dustin, there were, um, Shakura had shared earlier that her family, uh, they spend their money on, on travel and good food. Um, travel. Dana Cunin, and good. Dana Cunin, as, as everyone was speaking about things going up, just said, that, you know, there's a new Wawa that's going up, um, seems to be, you know, every month. Um, just scrolling through right. this. Scrolling through. So, a lot some of these gas stations, are... right? A lot of new gas stations. Yeah. Exciting, Jacksonville. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh huh. Marjan shared that she's not sure, but maybe on houses. I live near Mandarin. I see a lot of houses being built up. Olivia shares there's a ton of new communities being built up where she lives. Um, I think you saw that earlier. She stated that she can't find a trampoline anywhere. Stephanie states uh, car washes. Um, oh, the Bucky's. Uh, Olivia shared the Bucky's. So, okay. Uh, before you move on, yes. Uh, Robin here. Going yes. back to gas stations, I was driving one day with my family and we saw three gas stations right near each other. There was one, two across the street from each other and then one right, right across the other street. So it's like a little L of gas stations. <laughs> I was so confused. Like, there's no need for this many. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And I, I think I agree with you. I'm seeing a lot of them. Also, when I heard car washes, yes, I'm seeing a lot of those. I'm seeing a lot of Wawa's. Yes, I am. Can I say something? Guys, I do apologize. Yes, yes. No, Mark, let's go. <laughs> not, not that, is that Mark not that, that I was talking just answers. now? Yeah. yeah, now that I hear more answers, I do have like a comment. So I think yeah. what's, what, I, what I've seen like growing up is that a lot of people from the north side would travel to the south side to spend money. So rather it be Regency, avenues of the town center and that's where a lot of money has went and the other neighborhoods like norwood flea market or even um like the dunn avenue shopping center what like the money began to die out so therefore the community never got any type of money being funded back into that community mark here we go now you're talking to me <laughs> leaving those communities and actually spending a lot of money in in other spaces yes that happens a lot doesn't it especially in some of these communities that we talk about being overlooked if there are people who have means are they staying there and spending their money there or are they traveling to some of these other spaces that we've discussed to spend that money yes we have a lot of millionaires here in the city. We do, and let's put the millionaires aside. We have a lot of people in this. This is a huge city. Let me go on ahead and shift my slide. And Carrie, let me know when you see something other than, yes. Sorry, can I, one more comment. Like speaking of trying, like I know Shad Khan tried to, speaking of sports and he got turned down. Like he tried to make downtown better and he got turned down by the city for a lot of what he was trying to spend his own money on. So the city itself. Lot J, Lot J. And now that's a controversial comment you just made Shakura because <laughs> there are a lot of people involved in that would have been a lot of tax money and then that was a deal that I think uh, I, I think I was excited about that deal he was trying to make. The question was how much are we paying for it versus him? And mm. it seemed like people were realizing that we were paying for it and he was probably going to cash in a little more than us. But that is something that's interesting that um, as downtown develops, what is going to be happening down there, right? Yeah, yeah. but thank you for sharing that one, Shakura, because that's one of the things that's kind of been changing as well. Do you guys see these are two being people, wasteful. older people? Yes. Like, are being wasteful. Like, when they built, they they changed the road downtown, only have to, to have to turn around and change it again because it was ruining people's cars. Like, so you didn't think about, about this some, before you did it and spent so all that money? Tax dollars there. And now the tax dollars are going to be a little different, too, from 
this idea of where your money is going on the screen. Do you guys see this couple right here? Dustin, we, we see them. Okay. Does, is anyone familiar with who these two people are? Is that Dolores? No. Ah, that was a good guess. No. Oh, no, it is not. That was a good guess right there. That was a good guess. Anyone else? That was my guess too, and I'm wrong too, so I have no idea. Ah, that's okay. It's all right. These are I. Um, this is a couple. Actually, they're from New York City. So this was a. This they're kind of random. This is Dorothy, um, and Herbert Vogel. And I and I threw this out there, but I wasn't expecting you guys to know who they were. I'm going to switch the slide to explain who they are. All right. Let me know, Carrie, can y'all see those words? Not yet. Okay, so I'm gonna start reading here. So Herb Vogel, a postal worker from Harlem, okay? Dorothy Vogel, a librarian at the Brooklyn Library. So they got married in 1962. Um, and they are the unlikely owners of one of the most important art collections in the country, right? two government workers, right? Married and living in a claustrophobic one bedroom rent controlled apartment on the Upper East Side with cats and turtles and tropical fish. They got tanks everywhere in there in their little apartment and the floor and a floor to ceiling art collection that they amassed from the 60s, I would say to the 2000s. They collected 4,000 pieces of work that are valued in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Let me remind you, he worked at the post office and she works as a she worked as a librarian. Why do you think that they have managed <laughs> to accumulate with those two humble salaries assets that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars? Anyone want to give me an answer to that question? It wasn't worth as much when they bought it and then it appreciated value. When they bought what? When they purchased the art, it wasn't worth as much. When they purchased that's art, Shakur, that's the main thing right there. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So this discussion that I wanted to have with you all today, this discussion is really, really about this idea of expendable income at this huge city. We have a lot of you, and I'm talking to people within a college and academic context. So I'm not even talking to the average person out on the street. I'm asking where, where does disposable income go? We're talking about arts and culture and growing the community. There is not a culture outside of major centers like maybe New York City, or LA or Chicago, there are not major, these are not major centers where money is going toward the arts. In New York City, these two decided in the 60s that they were going to go to a lot of art shows. They were going to study up on who people were, who the creatives were in their communities, what these people were making. And then the two of them just together decided which of these people that they were looking at were people that they believed in? Who were these people they believed in? And then what they decided to do was, one of them, I think it would have been Herb, decided that they were gonna devote 100% of his salary to purchasing art from artists. Can you imagine that? And then Dorothy's salary went to all of their living expenses. So imagine them now being in New York City, yes, going to all of these up and coming artists, visiting with them, talking to them, and then doing their research and then deciding what they thought was quality enough stuff to buy. And then not only buying one piece from the artist, but then starting to patronize those artists. So even if it was on payment plans of 50 to $100 a month, they started to go ahead and purchase pieces regularly from people. The shot that's up on the screen now, and does it look like, is there a shot of art on walls? 
Secretary? Is that what we're looking at? Dustin, that is what we were looking at. And yeah. can I share a couple of comments just as people were asking? Um, there, there's a question, and you've explained this a little bit, but Laura had stated by unknown artists, and they have good eye for talent. Um, yeah. You know, Steph, Stephanie had asked if you know they're going to auctions. Uh, Abdullah um, made the comment, no so auctions. it's box. Okay, so no, no auctions. No. Um, so, like, almost investing in this market said network investment. Shakur said said it looks like they are trying to take it, meaning I think art out of our public schools all the time, and. So, yes, but we can see uh, the artwork in the um, in the uh, uh, museum. This is OK. This is a small snippet actually from. Uh, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Approached the Vogels and this was the, the best thing about the Vogels is this is why they were so unusual. After amassing this collection, they decided that they did not want to sell any of it for profit. And what happened was they ended up donating their collection. Um, Herb has died now. I think that um, Dorothy's still alive. Donating their collection to the National Gallery of Art so all of you could see it for free. But what they managed to amass was a snapshot between the 60s and the 70s into the 80s of what um, of the 4,000 pieces of work, not everything was from a famous artist, but there were a lot of famous artists whose work, whose works go for like one piece in the hundreds of thousands to the millions. They have amassed a huge collection. And this was not something that happened because they were millionaires. This was something that happened because they were ordinary people who decided that they were going to devote themselves to properly studying and patronizing their local art community. You see where I'm going here with my last lecture, folks? I'm going to wrap this up soon because I'm going to have to run to class. And here's a question I have for you. And Carrie, let me know when that question is up so you can read it to me and to everyone else who's on the call. <laughs> and did that pop up? Or are we still looking at art on walls? So the question is, what is on your walls? Yes, people. All of my educated people, all of my college people, not my average people on the street. I will tell you something right now, and this is, this is very, very true. The average thing that's on the average person's wall, do you have anything that's on your wall that you think actually is going to appreciate in value? Do you have anything that's on your wall that you researched? Is there a person, is there a particular artist that is known more nationally? Is there an artist that's very well known in our region? Or is there an artist that you know that's in your community in, in Northeast Florida or specifically your community who you have decided to invest in? And I'm not talking about people who might necessarily be super, super expensive but people who you feel like you believe in, people who you've observed that you think are really talented. And I will just say this right now, as I'm sure some of you may be um, <clears throat> messaging Carrie right now, and I'll have one or two of you on mute in a second to join in. I will say, in my experience, there's a very small amount of people who actively and thoughtfully invest in the creative community, in their creative communities. Please push back on me if you feel like I'm saying something that's not true. And anyone, someone can unmute themselves right now and tell me if I'm speaking the truth or am I, or am I just making some stuff up here on this lovely Wednesday? <laughs> so Dustin, Robin shared that uh, her own art was on the walls. She, of course, did ugly paintings, ugly paint, not paintings. Um, Janaya stated um, mainly her own paintings. Um, Laura uh, shared that photo she takes and made into canvas art, uh, her kids' art. Uh, Damien um, shared that his girlfriend's an artist, and so they have plenty. Um, she's also had solo shows uh, before here in, in Kent Campus. 
for I know someone who makes wood art, but I haven't purchased the, that art yet. I spent my money on other things. Uh, Lacey, I feel is important, maybe important um, from art, from, from local artists. Mark Harris, I don't have anything on my walls, but in my closet, I have uh, something with value. Mark John, my certificates are on my wall, my own big art. Um, okay. No, I added. love these answers. Yeah. I'm loving these answers, and as they're coming in, I want to let you guys know, because this is really cool. Pictures of family, maybe? Artwork that you've made? Yes? Artwork of a close family member or a girlfriend? Yes? Things of that nature? Yeah? That is lovely. That doesn't count. <laughs> and when I say that doesn't count, I'm talking about this idea of growing and patronizing this community that you are in. All right. I'm saying this with love too, guys. I'm saying this with love. Let me go on ahead and switch because here's the next question. And Carrie, when that question pops up, I want you to interrupt me here. All right. Because uh, I love the fact that you guys love your own stuff. I love it's up. Yes. It's up. Could you it's read up. that question to the crowd here, please? Where here. is your hard earned money going? Here we go. And now I've been teaching here at the school, I would say for, it's God, I'm getting old. It's going on to 16 years now. And I'm going to switch slides here in a moment because I know a place that a lot of my students that don't have a lot of income right now, a, lot, a place that they go to a lot, a place that um, has very good deals, a, uh, a place that they patronize their loyal patrons of. Is that picture up on the screen yet, Carrie, or are we still on my question? We are on the question right now. Okay, so we're going to wait a moment because I there it is. The there it is. Yes, it is there. Hey, there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Harrods lax lecture is done. Okay, wait. A minute, stop. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Jacksonville still has a big cultural problem. Okay, we have a huge problem, and here it is. I'm not on here trying to. All of you out, thank you so much for tuning in. And I didn't want you to tune in for me to go ahead and call you out and drag you here. That's not what this is all about, okay? <laughs> all right. What I would say to you right now, though, is that of the money that I make personally, I have so much work that I can't put it on all of the walls in my own house. I'm not talking about my work. I'm talking about the work of a lot of young and up and coming artists here in Jacksonville. Okay. I've got some flat file folders here at school for the overflow of the work that I am purchasing from people. Now, so when I say this to you, I'm not saying this to you because I'm, uh, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but I want, I'm saying this to you because I want you to think hard about is our money going to these billionaires who have set up shop in all of your communities? Is it going to these business models where the majority of the people who work in these spaces, like the picture that's on the screen, the majority of the people who work in these places are living close to or below the poverty level line? Yes? while the people on the top on the top of these major corporations who are kind of xing out a lot of mom and pops across the country right i know how convenient amazon is they will have the stuff right at your door the next day my wife has amazon prime and i swear i keep hearing that doorbell being rung and i see a package and i roll my eyes right i know how convenient it is but what are you doing to help grow this community so that we do not become another generic community where you can drive from here to Orlando and find the same Walmart and the same town center template and the same basic eateries that you got here in the other city. What are you doing? Where is your hard earned money going? And are you actively supporting any of these creatives or unique shops? Yes. It may be a little more expensive, but I guess if you would like to rather invest in Walmart, Target, and I don't know, your local uh, Hobby Lobby, 
I guess that's what we are going to be. But I'm challenging you. I think that we can be better. And I can't be the only one spending money on a lot of young artists here. So I'm gonna leave you with this. I would like for you just to keep your eyes open. See if you can find someone that you're not related to who makes things or someone who might be in the community overall. And I'm not talking about me. I sell work already. I'm doing fine. This is not about me, okay? Let me just clear that up. And I would like for you to think long and hard about where you would like to channel that money, whether it's $20 for some small print that a kid is making, or if it's $2,000 from an artist who might be more established. And on that note, I, I am done. Um, thank you guys very much. And if there are any people who would like to ask any questions before we wrap up, please unmute yourselves. I've got class in about 10 minutes, um, but I would like to hear from at least one or two of you before I leave. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for this presentation. Um, I actually, it's funny you asked that question of what art do we have on our walls? Because I went to the um, art show at the Burrito Gallery and I think I saw you like getting into your car when I was getting out of your car, his car. Oh, and, um, you went? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I absolutely loved one of the paintings that was, um, it was a woman, it was supposed to be an indigenous woman from Puerto Rico, Taino. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Yes. Um, she's yes. wearing like a, a headdress. And I actually did message the artist on Instagram to ask her if it was for sale because I just loved it so much. And I, I didn't know how much it would cost you. or if I could afford it. But I did ask her and unfortunately it's not for sale. So I would almost be able to answer your question. Yes, I do have local <laughs> art on my wall and I tried, but it was not meant to be. But um, I do take your point. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, if you're at the arts market or something and there's something small and it's affordable, just to give an artist a chance, or I mean, even if it's, you know, a stretch, but I think that your point about, you know, if you've possibly got some disposable income in your budget and you can spend it on local art, support artists, keep your money in our community, it's definitely a great message for all of us to hear. Laura, bless you. You are amazing. Thank you for going to that show. And I know we keep up on social media. So every now and then, I will not only buy work, but find venues for art, young artists to show work and then advertise it on my platforms. And the thing is, I will do all of those things, but honestly, after I do those, it's people like Laura who actually will show up and take a look at the work and dare I say, buy something that makes the biggest difference because me just finding spaces for them to show is not enough. And Laura, thank you. And the other challenge I would have for you too is when you find the artists that you kind of like buying more than just one thing because then that's what sustains them. And if they don't have something that's for sale, can they make something smaller at a price you can afford? And might you buy one and maybe buy one more for a gift for a friend? Yes, but thank you very much. That is fantastic. Anyone else want to unmute themselves before I have to run? To painting class. Dustin, Olivia shares that she's so glad she joined. She knew nothing about the art community here, but she'd love to be part of it. Wow, Olivia, and I'm gonna tell you this right now, and for anyone else who's on the call. So I'm on Instagram, just under Dustin Harewood, and then um, I'm on Facebook under Dustin Harewood. I post my own things, but then on through some of my stories, I will also be sharing some young artists that I am actively mentoring or trying to support. Or if you ask me questions, I will definitely share shows that are coming up now that people are getting vaccines. And by all means, would love to see you at a show, would love to have you participate. And it's through people like me, I will very easily plug you in with everything. So if it's you're finding it hard, how do I find stuff? Just come talk to me, I'm here. Thank you so much. I'm I'm basically like completely self-taught artist. I've never taken an actual like art course or anything. So okay. this is like absolutely like amazing to to learn about completely. That is fantastic. And Olivia, you know what I'm gonna tell you right now? You one of the secrets to my success as an artist is that every time that I sell a piece, I buy a piece from someone else. Wow. 
but think about that. But so my success is based on, well, we're going in a whole other direction now. I believe in the law of compensation. I think, I believe in church, you call it tithing, don't you? <laughs> All right. So, and this is what I mean. So when I'm talking to you guys and I'm trying to call you out, it's only because we need you. We need you, especially you people from this academic environment. Yes. So Olivia, I would love to see your work. Yes. I would love to introduce you to other artists who are probably making work like yours and other artists that you might like and you might want to interact with. But dare I say, Olivia, it's not enough for you just to be making. The best way to network is when you actually show up and support that other artist or those other people. And, and they will, in turn, a lot of them will be compelled to show you the same love and support in return, whether financial or just otherwise just being there for you. And if it's not through them, law of compensation, it will come from sources that you do not know about yet. Justin, uh, Sharon, Sharon Brown's hand is up. Sharon, if you, and I, I do know that you need to run to your class, but uh, so Sharon, the last you, one, yeah. let's wrap it up with this one. Let's go. Yes. The best for last. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I found, what I have found is um, with local artists, because I, I, you know, very passionate about something that I like. And a lot of times I'll stop and I'll speak with them. And I have, re I have gotten a lot of free art. From artists, they're just so happy that I love their art. They'll give me stuff, and I still buy it. But I've got a lot of free stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, support your local artists, and even if you can't buy it, just let them know that you appreciate their art. Um, they're amazing. There's a woman in Saint Augustine, and she paints these like weird fairies, and I want to go back and get her art because it actually made me cry because it was so haunting. Um, so I actually want to go back and um, purchase her stuff, but it's like haunting. But yeah, even if you can't buy it, let stop and let them know that you appreciate and let them know how it makes you feel because that that helps them and inspires them as well. Just that's that is saying. that is fantastic. Thank you for that. And if you can't afford something, if you go back to see the fairies and they're too expensive, the next question is: Is there a payment plan? Because there are yeah, a lot you of mentioned too. that, so I definitely because I'm like, wow, her stuff is amazing, it's amazing. Oh, this is fantastic, and dare I say it too? Thank you. That was a great way to end this. Dare I say also, guys, stop buying posters and things from Hobby Lobby or Target, <laughs> please. Okay, I know the nice, cute little sayings there, you know, that you put up on the wall that have that nice little uh, gallery framing. Those are really cute. Okay, please. Please, come on now, we can do better, can't we? Where on earth is that money going also? So thank you for that. And dare I say, buy the ferry because you love it. You can buy it because if you wanted to invest, but you can buy it because you love it. And if you love that ferry and you buy it, that's Absolutely. fantastic. You are supporting her livelihood. And yes. at the same yes. moment, 10, 20 years from now, that ferry might not be worth the $200 you bought it for. Because if that artist is still working, that $200 or $500 ferry could be worth $2,000 or $3,000. And that's also the benefit versus that those worthless posters and things that you guys have all up on the walls. Thank you very much. God bless and good night. I got to go teach now. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Terry, for inviting me.